Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Kai and I have for you today another work with me video. This is for a House of the Dragon set of nails. It was a quest actually by my boyfriend who's a huge fan of the show. It was quite challenging for me personally because I have actually never watched Game of Thrones. I've never watched House of the Dragon. Actually, that's a lie. I have seen um, like a couple episodes of the earlier seasons of Game of Thrones. It's honestly something that's right up my alley. It's just something I have never had time to really get into fully because if I start a show, I'm going to want to binge it. So this was his request. Apparently there's an episode coming out later today that's supposed to be like the craziest episode of all time of House of Dragons, Game of Thrones. So he gave me some inspiration pictures and I kind of just went from there. So I'm starting off with a deep red jelly nude color from Born Pretty. This video is also going to feature quite a few of the products that Born Pretty has sent to me, including some of the newer things. If you've been around my channel for quite some time, I really like Born Pretty as like a good budget friendly brand if you're trying to get into like Korean, Japanese gel polishes because they do a lot of budget friendly dupes. So I'm starting with two coats of that jelly red color. I'm going to be doing black on the ring and the pointer finger. While I am base painting these pre-prepped nails, please keep in mind uh, safety when it comes to gel. Make sure that you are wearing gloves if you're coming in contact with any sort of gel polish and that you do research on the products that you are using to make sure that they are compatible and that you don't develop any sort of allergy. Now, Born Pretty does have some HEMA-free gels. This one is supposed to be one of them. However, I did notice that they do have HPMA in their formula still for a lot of their polishes. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind if you do have an allergy to gel polish. But they do list every ingredient on the bottle, which is super nice for those looking to avoid certain things. This, however, is a HEMA-free product. It is Gel Monster, the new brand by Zillaboo. Zillaboo is an American distributor of Korean Japanese gel brands, and they actually came up with their own gel polish. It is still produced in Korea, but it is supposed to be vegan, HEMA free, and I only have the black and white so far. They're really pigmented though, like you can see here, it's almost a one coat black, which is really hard to find in blacks because they're so pigmented. A lot of companies make them somewhat sheer so that they will cure properly but the white is definitely one coat, the black is a two coat color, and I did recently pick up some more Zillaboo products, including more Gel Monster products to try out, so I'm excited to do a haul for those things here in the near future. I got some of the regular colors from Gel Monster just to see how they perform because I don't use fully opaque polishes a lot, but when I do, I really want them to be opaque so I don't have to do too many coats. So I have my nails with one coat of bold colors and now I'm going to be applying a second coat just to get full opacity out of that black and just to deepen that jelly red color a little bit. I will say I'm a huge fan of Born Pretty's jelly colors. Even though they're super budget friendly, they do perform pretty well. They have really good even color payoff. You can see here even just one coat you could get away with if you wanted a, a brighter color. I was going for a darker red, so I opted for two full coats of the polish, but again, they smooth out really nicely. There's not like a ton of streakiness so that you can get away with one coat if you would like. So yeah, if you're looking for a good budget-friendly brand, definitely check out Born Pretty. I do have a discount code with them as well. I will put that on the screen here and in the description below if you would like to support me. Just know that I have been buying from them long before they reached out to me, so I do really like them as a budget-friendly brand. This is a red magnetic gel that they sent to me to try as PR. Now, this one is this really pretty like red, orange to yellow green shift that I thought would be perfect for a dragon nail because it's just got like all of the colors of fire in it. Use the bar magnet it comes with. You just want to hold it parallel to the nail. 
find the side that's going to pull those magnetic pigments towards it and then flip the magnet over and hold it against the other side for that very basic velvet look. Now I'm using their non-stick clear gel. Now their non-stick gel in comparison to the like Yogo 3D gel is quite thick. It doesn't exactly level out quite as much as the Yogo 3D clay. So I opted for this product because I was going to be hand sculpting the sword for this nail. Quite the undertaking. Um, I really wanted to challenge myself here. And so I wanted something that I just knew was going to hold its shape really easily. I, I do want to get into acrylic for sculpting some things because acrylic is going to be even stronger when it cures in terms of sculpting out little teeny tiny things. So I do want to get into acrylic eventually just for 3D sculpting. For today, this will work. So I lay out like a basic long shape that will become my blade. I don't really care too much about the overall shape right now. I just needed some something long enough because I go in here with a file and I file it down to a point. Now this was kind of difficult because it was still just ever so slightly pliable because it was such a thin piece of cured gel. So I did go ahead and take my gloves off. At this point it's cured. I wiped away any sort of tacky layer and I try to get that file down to a really nice and thin point. And looking at the end product, don't get me wrong, I'm super pleased with how it turned out, but I do think in terms of like the proportions between this and the sword that it's actually based off of, which is one of the characters' swords from the show, I did look up inspiration by like looking up characters and looking up their weapons and looking at the dragons and whatnot. So um, if you can name the character that this sword belongs to uh, down below, please do, because honestly, I forgot. <laughs> Like I said, I've never actually seen the show, so this whole set was quite the challenge, but ultimately I am happy with how it turned out. I just, in in terms of actual accuracy to the sword, I think this came out just a little too thick looking. It looks a little bit more like a dagger, but that's okay. I had fun making it, so... Here I'm just making the parts of the cross guard. I think they're supposed to look like dragon wings. Unfortunately, I did a lot of it off camera um, because I was just so focused on trying to get this to look right. But I am sculpting out the parts separately just because it was way easier for me to do an additive sculpting process, which is where you start with a basic shape and then you add little pieces and components to build your overall structure versus a subtractive sculpting process where you start with like a, a large brick of clay or of whatever medium you're using and you chip away at it. So I made the, the actual blade of the sword. I'm now making the actual um, handle and pommel portion. I've made the cross guard separately and then I will stick all of it together at the end. So here I am just refining the handle I am curing each part in between, by the way, so the blade is already cured, the um, bottom portion of the handle is already cured, that way I just make sure that the things that I'm happy with, they stay as they are and they don't get affected by the other parts that I'm sculpting. So here I'm just adding a little bit of gel to stick the two portions of the cross guard into. Again, they're a little bit big for the size of the blade, but considering I'm trying to fit all of it onto a nail, I was pretty happy overall with the look. Just flattening that section down, and then I'm going to cure it all together. That's what it looks like. I do give it a nice wipe with some alcohol just to make sure that any residual residue is wiped away, and then I have a smooth surface to paint on. It was very fragile though, so this is definitely not a set that you wear like out and about for everyday wear. It is very much like a showpiece, so it's super thin, super fragile, not practical at all, but I am pleased with the overall outcome. So I knew I wanted to paint this a metallic silver, and the metallic paints usually go on best when you have a really smooth surface. So I am top coating the whole sword. And then I'm going to be using the Born Pretty Metal Painting Gel. 
this is their super shine formula i love this stuff it is really thin so i do recommend mixing it well before you use it this stuff is so shiny if you let it settle you do need to paint it on and then let it sit i will say if you try to paint it on cure it right away it is not going to look super mirror like you need to let it sit for a good like 30 seconds i would say but after you do let it sit it gives a beautiful shine it is very thin though, so there are a couple products I use for the metallic look. This is one of them, the other I will show you a little bit later, but I use this for covering like large areas, for doing really teeny tiny details where you need a paint that's going to be pretty thin. If you want something a little bit more textured, something that's going to hold its shape, then I switch to the Vendini metallic painting gel that I'll show you later. But the shine on this is just one of the best that I've tried and I haven't tried too many metal painting gels. Usually I'm working with like chrome, but this just makes getting a metallic silver super easy. So to add some of the decoration on the hilt of the sword, I'm just going in with that gel monster black. I'm painting the handle, the hilt, and the black and then I will go back in with the metal painting gel just to add the little details. It's not a complete replica of the original sword. That one is just incredibly detailed. Like we're talking, you know, filigree design on the blade itself, on the handguard. I just couldn't get that level of design, but I did try to stay relatively true to the overall, I would say, profile of the sword. Here's that Vendini metal painting gel. As you can see, this stuff is just more thick is really nice for doing like super fine details where you want it to have like that raised texture that's what i was going for here is having details that were going to stand out that would be almost like um embossed so i'm using that vendini painting gel it is not quite as shiny though like the born pretty metal painting gel is definitely a more smooth shiny finish Whereas the Vendini is a little bit more of like a silver sparkly chrome. But I think these details just really brought the sword to life. I wasn't really sure how I felt about it before this point without the added texture, without the, the hilt painted. Um, but now that I add those details, uh, I'm actually really proud of how this turned out. I think it looks pretty good, even if it does look a little bit more like a dagger than a sword, just because of how thick that blade is. I couldn't really get it much thinner without snapping it. I tried. I tried filing it down a little bit, but it just, it was not going to be filed down any more than that. I think if I had used acrylic, that it would be strong enough to get it down to like a really sharp, tiny edge, which is part of the reason why I want to get into sculpting with acrylic. I don't know if I'll go as far as like using acrylic on nails. I don't necessarily need to for press-ons. I know some people do acrylic press-ons. I like working in gel, but it would be nice to learn the basics of acrylic for the sake of doing like really fine petals. I've seen people use acrylic for that. Um, there's actually a creator on Instagram who I follow. I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but I'll, I'll link a little picture here and include her handle down below, but she does absolutely amazing sculptures. I'm not even going to call it nail art because it's just like regular art, but she uses acrylic to sculpt a lot of her elements. So yeah, that's something I really want to try eventually. I just have to get over the smell, to be honest. That's one of the biggest things holding me back. I did recently pick up um, like an odorless monomer. It's supposed to be low odor, so maybe that'll work. We shall see. But I also have a ton of other products that I just, I really need to use up. Um, so we'll see. I, I always have grand ideas and grand plans and then I get sidetracked. So that is the finished sword. Really happy with how it looks. I give everything a really nice cure and then I glue it onto the nail itself with my trusty McCart rhinestone glue. 
Love this stuff. It offers great hold and the squeezy tube makes it super easy to apply. So I'm just sticking the sword on there, pressing it down, making sure it's aligned the way I want it to, and then giving it a really nice and full cure. And here is my boyfriend bringing me a green tea because at this point I think I was like probably three hours into the set. For the chrome logo, I am going in with the Zero Matte Top Coat from Devoc. This is a new product to me. I'm recently trying it after getting it as part of a PR package. So far, I'm liking it for isolated chrome. And I'm using the MPA Art Palette to do the chrome details here. I've seen quite a few people use this palette to do their chrome work, so I just pulled out the black. I honestly probably should have used white to make it easier for me to see what I'm doing, but I thought the black on the matte surface would be easy enough to see. It was okay. It wasn't too bad, but I'm just painting on the entire logo in one go because I don't want to overcure the polish, which in hindsight was probably a bad idea. Um, I did have to go in and as you can see here, wipe away quite a few mistakes. Uh, I just use a Q-tip and some alcohol, but unfortunately in doing that, it did um, leave a a little bit of a residue on the nail and so my chrome wasn't as clean as I'd wanted it to be at the very end. There was definitely some fallout sticking but I I haven't figured out yet how to do like a really intricate pattern like this where I know I'm going to be messing up and having to wipe away extra nail polish to clean up my mistakes and still find a way to get a really clean chrome design because I always find no matter what method I'm using, no matter what top coat, if I'm wiping away gel polish, even if I use alcohol, it is going to leave a little bit of a residue that makes the chrome powder stick. Maybe I should try acetone. That's, you know, that's a thought I just had. So we'll see. But I am painting in the logo here. This one, I believe, is the logo from the book. Somebody who knows what they're talking about, please correct me if I'm wrong. I did see that there was the other logo, the House of Targaryen logo. That one just seemed like it would be a little bit too complex for a single nail. It is circular in nature, which means that it's a little bit wider than this one. Even this one here, I had a lot of trouble like fitting it on the nail on its own. You'll see um, the middle dragon head I'm not too pleased with actually with the final results it was just it was too cramped i didn't have the room to make it to the scale that i had wanted that would be appropriate for the logo um i really i really struggled with this middle head here and it does kind of bleed into the other head on the right and it loses some of the clarity but is what it is at this point i think i had worked on the logo itself for like an hour trying to paint it trying to get it perfect so at some point, I just had to say, you know what, it's good enough, it is what it is. I do kind of throw in the towel without it being exactly the way I wanted it, but sometimes in art, you just have to do that. If you've been working on something for hours on end, it's not looking right or it's not feeling right and you're getting frustrated, sometimes you just have to move on, either take a break and come back to it or just kind of like accept that it's going to be a learning experience that if it's your first time trying something that it's not going to be perfect so that's a lesson that i'm definitely having to learn on this nail art journey is to just kind of if something's not working out perfectly be okay with not failure but to be okay with um just getting it done for the sake of having that experience for the sake of completing it so that the next time you come back and you've hopefully learned from what went wrong the first time. So I am just using the Nail Bio Glitter, the Nail Bio Chrome Powder, this is the gold, and I'm buffing that into that dragon pattern. I cured it for 30 seconds only just to make sure that the, the MPA palette gel still had a nice tackiness to it to hold onto that chrome powder. It worked really well. I think it covered um, very nicely. 
and then i am going in here and i just wanted a little bit more texture to make those wings stand out so i am outlining like the i guess the bones in between uh each section of the wing then i'm going to cure that for another 30 seconds and go in with a second layer of chrome powder over those and usually when I do chrome work, if I pull out like a little um, makeup sponge, it wipes away the fallout really well. Here, I still had some fallout that was sticking, I think, to areas that I had previously wiped away um, the pattern where it was not to my liking. So unfortunately, this was not a perfect chrome design. It did have fallout, but I went ahead and top coated it anyway. This is my dedicated chrome top coat. Definitely get yourself a bottle of top coat that you want to use just for chrome designs because it will indeed contaminate the bottle no matter how carefully you wipe away the fallout. So this is the middle finger and I actually redid this nail because I was originally thinking of doing like a 3D dragon eye. You can see my attempt here. I hated it <laughs> when I was working on it. I felt it just looked a little bit too cartoony for this set so I scrapped it and I went with more of like an organic kind of eye shape gemstone type thing I use that cat's eye gel to just outline like a kind of a an almond shape you could interpret it as an eye if you'd like or it could just be like some sort of organic blob I'm not sure I was I was just going for um, something a little bit more subtle. So I magnetize the particles, I put that into cure, and then I'm going to top coat the whole thing with my zombie top coat. I really like this stuff, it is quite thick though. If you're looking for a thin fluid top coat, this is not for you, but it does self-level really nicely. And then I'm using my Madame Glam black embossing gel. I like this stuff because it's non-wipe, so I can use it as like a texture, as the last step in a nail look. So I'm just going in and I'm very roughly outlining that eye shape, that gemstone shape, and I'm using a really loose hand here so that the lines are not super smooth, they're very wiggly and very organic looking. And I just extend those around that eye almost to look like um, maybe scales or something crackling. You want to hold your brush uh, closer to the back end than you usually would to do like these really loose wiggly lines. If you're holding it like too close to where the bristles are, uh, you have more control. And here you actually want a little bit less control. You want to use like the natural shake of your hand to get that really organic looking fluid squiggly line. So I just cure that for a minute and it is good to go. Now I'm considering what other sort of decorations I could add onto that sword nail. I thought this gold skull would work. Uh, you know, dragons, swords usually result in some sort of death but it was pointed out to me um that the gold skull charm that i use here along with a charm that i had put on the pinky finger made the set look a little bit more piratey less game of thronesy so i don't end up using that in the final design but i do use the gemstones and the caviar beads that i'm adding here this was just to kind of fill up some of that black space. I felt this nail had way too much empty space. The sword was really cool. It was a centerpiece, but it needed some other like smaller rhinestones, some smaller decorations to pull it all together. This is the Jinbi Ivy Multiliner. I'm loving this lately because it is just the regular like thick to standard formula of the Jinbi top coat and it comes with a liner brush ready to go so that you can surround your gems and make sure that they're not going anywhere. It is a non-white formula. It has a teeny tiny little bit of yellowing, so just something to note, you don't wanna lay it on super, super thick if you have like a really light color in the background or if you're trying to go for like a clear nail look, but it does give a really nice shine. 
I'm just going over that gemstone portion here on this nail to give it kind of like a 3D effect. And then here is the pinky finger that I don't even end up using. Um, I <laughs> spent a lot of time like laying down the cat eye gel, doing this bubble effect for a black gradient nail here. It's where you put down a wet coat of paint and then you pile on some bubbles and cure with the bubbles on the nail itself. And you get this really cool texture. It almost looks like lizard or dragon skin. However, I do end up scrapping this nail in favor of the chainmail nail, just for something that was a little bit more medieval, less pirate looking. So here's me redoing the pointer finger and thinking about what I'm going to do for the pinky finger. Now this footage is sped up three times, but I probably sat there for a good like five minutes just trying to think of what I was going to do for this design, for the pinky finger, for the pointer finger. I swear a good hour to two hours goes into me just researching what I want to do for a design, pulling together inspiration pictures, whatnot. So I wanted to leave a little bit of that in just so you could see kind of like the real what goes on behind the scenes when designing one of these sets? Um, there's a lot of trial and error, a lot of thinking involved. I redid a total of three of these nails, right? Yeah, three, one of them twice. So it was quite the undertaking and just with not knowing the source material super well, it did take me some time to figure out exactly what design elements I wanted included on each nail. Now. The pointer finger here I'm redoing because my original method was doing like the snake skin look where you put a gel into a blooming gel in dots and it kind of dissipates into what looks like a reptile skin pattern. Um, it was giving too much snake, not enough dragon, so instead I painstakingly went in with that red magnetic gel and hand painted each scale shape. Here I'm just making sure to add in a little bit of extra gel wherever I felt like the magnetic effect wasn't strong enough. By doing this, my hope was that when I magnetized the particles, it would really outline each scale super well. In hindsight, I don't know that this was necessary. I think I could have potentially gotten away with um, like painting the whole nail and then outlining each cell in black without having to like paint on the general shape first but maybe not i don't know i won't know because i did it this way to start with so as you can see here when you magnetize each portion and they're separated like this each little cell has its own kind of like shift to it which is why i did it that way and then here i'm just taking the mpa palette again the black and I am painting in between each scale. It it was feeling a little bit too much like um like a fishnet pattern for me when I went in and added the outline. So once again, I'm changing up the design just a little bit. I paint in the separation lines, and then I go in same black gel, same brush, and I paint what's almost like smaller scales on top just to add a little bit more um, variation so that it looks more scale-like and not just like a, a fishnet design. So that's what I'm doing here. Just painting in those little teeny tiny smaller scales in between. I don't know if I love how it came out overall, but at this point, um, I, I was working on this kind of like all Friday evening and now it's most of Saturday afternoon and I still have to do this voiceover, edit the video, get the thumbnail out um, before the episode airs tomorrow. So I didn't have time to redo this. Um, if I had more time, I think I would want to work on like a 3D scale pattern using like a 3D gel and sculpting each scale out individually and gluing it to the nail, but I just Unfortunately, did not have time for that for this set. But once that is all painted, I am top coating everything with that zombie top coat. 
I am doing this step so that I can add the 3D texture on last using that same IV multi-liner gel. So I'm top coating, carrying the full care time for the top coat, and then I'm using that skinny liner brush for the multi-liner to just fill in each scale individually. I'm using quite a bit of product here just to get kind of like that raised 3D bubble effect for each scale. This was the simplest way I could think of getting kind of like a 3D texture without having to do what I said before, which was go in and hand sculpt each scale, lay them out overlapping. This was just the easiest solution I could think of for adding some intrigue and some 3D elements without spending way too much time because at this point, um, I had like six and a half hours of footage from Friday night working on these nails. And then in total, I had two and a half from Saturday, which means a total of like nine hours of footage for just this one hand. So uh, I, was, I was attempting to find the most efficient way to finish this as possible. Honestly though, one of the biggest time commitments for doing these videos is the editing process. I swear it takes me probably three to four hours, maybe five or six to edit one single video, so yeah. Here I am creating what I wanted as a replacement for that golden skull. I, I agree it looked a little bit too piratey before, so in order to pull in that Game of Thrones theme even more, I am going to do the iconic O font here. So I'm just painting down a, a little circle of gel. You can use any clear gel, I'm just using that non-stick IV multi-liner. I cured it and then I just stuck it on a stand to paint the flat surface, the back surface. Anytime you can paint text on a flat surface, it's going to go a lot more smoothly. So I'm adding a layer of that matte top coat because I will be applying chrome to this design, giving that a nice long cure, and then using that MPA palette black again to draw in my O shape. I'm working in really small sections here because I wanted to have a really nice looking circle. And I knew for me personally, the smaller sections I work in, the easier it is for me to get something that looks really nice and even in the end, unless we're talking lines. If you're drawing a line, you want to work in one long stroke, but I find if you're drawing a circle, drawing really small short strokes and moving your left hand versus the right hand makes things so much easier. As you can see, I'm kind of like, rotating my left hand while keeping my painting hand relatively still. That way I get a really nice even circle. Another tip for hand painting is if you notice my pinky finger on my right hand is always anchored on something even if that is my left hand. When you have your hand anchored, it greatly reduces any sort of shaking that you might have even if you I've had, you know, a full cup of coffee. It's just going to help you have something to rest your hand against so that it's not like free floating and you're not using all of your hand muscles to try to keep it in place with nothing anchoring it to some sort of stable surface. So using your pinky as an anchor, either on a table or on your other hand, even if necessary, will greatly help you steady your painting hand so that you can get nice, smooth lines. After curing that design, I'm just buffing in the gold powder and then cleaning it up, cleaning off the excess. Here, I'm just gluing it to that thumb finger right where that skull was. I agree that this looks better. It looks a little bit more um, Game of Thrones-like. Topping it off with that top coat, my chrome top coat. One thing I do want to note is I'm not sure if it was the zero matte top coat or the degel top coat. I usually really like the signature top coat, but when I went to take pictures out in the sun, I was noticing that um, the, the black uh, chrome nail and then this little element here was a bit cloudy. Again, I don't know if that was the fault of the degel signature top coat, 
or if it was the combination of that top coat on top of the, the zero matte. So I'll have to do some digging. I will try to update you, but for now, I would not recommend using it over like a black polish because it does show a little teeny tiny bit um, in the sun if you're using that combination. So my thought for the pinky finger was to tie in like the red rhinestones and the silver from the thumb finger to the design by doing like a chainmail look. So I start with the red rhinestones and I actually end up replacing with black at the end just to offer a little bit more contrast. And I'm taking a jewelry chain that I have here. And my thought was to do like the corner of a piece of chainmail. So to achieve that, I am cutting out various sizes, various lengths of the chain. I started, I think, with like nine links and then I dropped down to seven and then to five on each side. So I have a nice layer of that rhinestone glue on the nail already just to stick the chains to. And then I'm going in with the shorter chains on either side and then a pair of even shorter chains after that. And I glue that all down. And then to make it a little bit more dull, it was looking a little bit too bright. I actually go in with a jelly black color from Born Pretty and I'm just adding that over the chain so it looks almost like tarnished. It was just looking a little bit too bright, a little bit too unnatural. And then I go in and I replace the red gemstones with the black just because it offered a bit more contrast to that red nail. And I'm taking my Jinbi Crazy Top standard here to encapsulate the chains so that they don't tarnish. And this is the final look. So overall, I'm pretty pleased with the design. It frustrated me to no end, that's for sure. I spent way too much time on it, redoing nails, figuring out um, how exactly I could get this to look Game of Thrones-like versus what was looking um, a bit too piratey, according to um, my boyfriend. So overall though, um, I think I'm happy with the results. If you are somebody who watches Game of Thrones, if you watch House of the Dragons, let me know how I did. This one is obviously meant to represent the black side. I thought about integrating like that theme of black versus green, but I just knew if I was doing a single hand, I would not be able to get both colors in there evenly represented. So I picked one side. Um, you tell me which side you're on. This was definitely some um, unknown territory for me, but overall, I think it was good to challenge myself to try to do something that I wasn't feeling 100% comfortable with. I'm pretty happy with the results. I think I'll be happier tomorrow <laughs> once I've not looked at it for some time. Here is the final B-roll of this set. I really appreciate all of you watching and all of my subscribers, new and old. I did start a Discord recently where we can all hang out, talk about nails, so I will put the invite link in the description down below. I really encourage you guys to join it if you want to chat with people about nails. I'll be putting like product recommendations there, sneak peeks of things that I have been working on, and I encourage you all to post too, it's not just for me to share. Definitely check that out. Thank you all so much for being here, for using my codes and everything. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your weekend and I will see you next time. Thank you. Bye.